Our history today project is on the triumph and tragedy of the Topaz Japanese internment camp during World War II. The Topaz internment camp is a tragedy because many of Japanese Americans' lives were destroyed. It is a triumph because America has learned from their mistakes. You might be wondering what the Topaz internment camp was. The word internment means putting a person in prison or other kind of detention, generally in wartime. During World War II, the American government put Japanese Americans in internment camps fearing they might be loyal to Japan. According to Gill Research and Context, the imprisonment of 120,000 Americans of Japanese descent is remembered at the, ten site, at the sites of 10 camps in the western states where they were held. These 120,000 people did nothing wrong. They were taken from their homes, put in a prison camp for three years, and then set free with hardly anything. Let's go back to one internment camp where it all happened. Welcome to Delta, Utah. This is a place where the Topaz Camp used to stand from 1942 to 1945. But this is no fun summer camp you'd want to go to! Look at this place. I know. The Japanese ha Americans had to live here for three years at most. They lived in Vera. That was were covered in tar paper. Everyone said it used to look like a tar paper city. They weren't insulated and they had to live through harsh winters and hot summers. Well, where's everything gone? The government took everything down after the camps closed in 1945. Why did they, why did they do that? They didn't want anyone to remember the awful things that their Japanese Americans had to go through. The people here were mistreated until the very end. Enough talk, let's get started. <laughs> that led up to our topic are the bombing of Pearl Harbor and World War II. On December 7, 1941, Pearl Harbor, a U.S. naval base in Hawaii, was bombed by Japan. This was devastating for America. This bombing forced the United States to join World War II. Socially, during this time of war, the American people were scared and defensive. Jean Wakatsuki, who was seven years old when her family was put into an internment camp, remembers how public attitudes towards the Japanese were shifting rapidly. In the first few months of the Pacific War, America was on the run. Tolerance had turned to distrust and irrational fear. Most Americans became racist towards anyone that even looked Japanese. Many people in the United States, including President Franklin D. Roosevelt, felt like they could not trust the Japanese Americans anymore. Politically, the government was under lots of pressure. In the book Pearl Harbor, the author Susan E. Heyman says, The president signs executive order 9066 on February 19th, 1942. Japanese on the U.S. West Coast are relocated to internment camps. During this time, the government was focused on helping the army for war, so America was not as economically strong. This made camps not in the best condition. This is a model of a barrack that people would live in in the Topaz internment camps. This is a medium size and could hold up to four people. The Topaz internment camp opened on September 11, 1942, near Delta, Utah. Topaz was one of the ten Japanese internment camps in the United States. The Topaz camp was in operation for just over three years. Over 11,000 people were processed through the camp during its duration. At any one time, the population of the camp was about 8,300 people. The people who were forced into the camps were people who immigrated from Japan to the United States. Some of the Japanese generations were called the Isai, Nisai, Sansai, and Nikai. The government only provided a coal stove for heating and the amount of beds that were the amount of people that lived in the room. Topaz officially closed on October 31st, 1945. Ironically, their worst nightmare ended on Halloween day. Some people may say that what we did was necessary to protect America and its citizens. We put the Japanese Americans in these camps to protect America from another major attack. If we did not put them in the internment camps, the United States would not be safe. Although the government did it to protect America, the U.S. had no proof of the Japanese Americans doing wrong. 
According to www.topazmuseum.org, these Americans were never convicted or even charged with any crime, yet were incarcerated for up to four years in prison camps surrounded by barbed wire and armed guards. The Japanese Americans were proud citizens of America that had done nothing wrong. Many Japanese American men fought bravely for our nation. The United States did not need to put them in the camps. The Japanese tried to recreate the lives that were stolen from them, but it was only an illusion. One short-term outcome of the Topaz Japanese internment camp was that the Japanese had no homes to return to. In the book, Children of Topaz, it describes this tragedy. Returning home was painful for many of the internees from Topaz and other relocation centers. They faced housing and job shortages. Their stored belongings often were either missing or vandalized. Some families were barely able to survive. Edwin Narahara, who remembered being his childhood in Topaz as an extended campout, also remembered being hungry for the first time when his family returned to California. Ted Nagata's family stayed in Utah, settling in Salt Lake City, but they were so poverty-stricken that Ted's father was forced to leave his children in a Catholic orphanage for a whole year. The triumph was that they were let out of the prison that they were kept in. The tragedy was that they had nothing. No food, no money, no homes. They pretty much had to start life over. Another short-term outcome is that America was slow to respect the Japanese. According to the children of Topaz, Nikai was also feared discrimination and hostility, and sometimes their fears were justified. Many people treated the Japanese poorly, even though they went out of the camps. For many, their lives never went back to normal. One long-term impact that came out of the Topaz internment camp is that we have learned from the mistakes that we have made. We now know that we should not do anything like that again, no matter what fears we may have. We need to take action in the correct way. America learned how to prevent this type of thing from happening again in the future and has grown from its mistakes. According to topazmuseum.org, in 1988, President Ronald Reagan signed the redress bill into law, issuing an apology to those interned and calling on Congress to budget compensation for the survivors. After 43 years, the government finally admitted their mistake, and now we have a law to protect a tragedy like this from happening again. In 2007, the Topaz site was listed as a National Historic Landmark by the National Park Service. The triumph of this is that we finally learned from our mistakes and how to make our country better. The tragedy is that this took years of suffering of Japanese Americans for us to learn our lesson. As a young actor in 1945, Ronald Reagan said, blood that has soaked into the sands of a beach is all of one color. America stands unique in the world, the only country not founded on a race but on a way, on an ideal, not in spite of, but because of our polyglot background, we have had all of the strength in the world. That is the American way. We hope that you have enjoyed our presentation and remember that our diversity is our greatest strength.